Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and welcome to the infotainment demo of the 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV. We're going to take a look at how the gauge cluster and touchscreen work on Chevy's new electric vehicle. If you're interested in any other elements of the car, check the link in the description. We've got a sound system demo of the Bose audio system, a DM review, and a test of the range on the highway. So for all that, check the links in the description. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. While this is technically a new model for Chevy, because this is the, oh, doesn't give me the triple honk, I thought I was going to. This is the uh, crossover-ish, a little bit longer version of the Chevy Bolt EV that's been out since 2017, but heavily refreshed for this model year. It's good. <laughs> I've, I've been pleasantly surprised spending time with this car. I was kind of initially just like, oh, this will be, be kind of a fine, cheap EV alternative, but no, I think this is a genuinely good car option for a lot of different buyers. So if you are interested in checking more out on the Bolt EUV, check the links in the description. This is the premier model, meaning we're getting the larger 10.2 inch touchscreen here in the center. It works very, very well. I'm excited to show it to you. But let's start off with this big digital gauge cluster. There are two different ways of configuring it for appearance, but you can see in this one that's set up right now, you're getting a lot of useful information right in a compact space. You have your speed and a digital readout, obviously no tachometer for an electric vehicle like this, but we're given some trip details and using this scroller knob and back and forth buttons, I'm able to scroll through a lot of different information screens in the center. You got your trip, average speed, tire pressure monitor right there on the dash. Nice to see a timer you can start. Maybe you're running lap times in your Bolt UV. Driver assistance, I'll show you if you're adaptive cruise or rather uh, yeah, you got Adaptive Cruise and your Super Cruise. That's on, and it'll show you how far behind the vehicle in front of you you are in seconds. Speed limit display, and a bit of a calm screen. If we click left, we get to go back and kind of to our other screens. You can bring up a media screen to show you what song is playing and actually change between various inputs from, right from the steering wheel. You have a navigation screen. It'll show you a compass where you are, and if you have a destination set in your navigation, it'll show you your directions right in front of you. A phone screen, should you want to make a phone call right from the, the gauge cluster without using the center screen or the voice command, you can do that. Here you have your layout adjustment. Right now we're in modern. If we scroll down to enhanced, not super different, but it's actually given you something that I find particularly useful, sort of a max and min range readout for your miles left. So now this is an EV. So it's saying you should have about 245 miles of electric range remaining. If you drive super gingerly, you'll probably squeeze that out to about 289. If you drive like an a-hole, you're probably gonna be down around 200. I like having that information up. It's a little overwhelming for some, but I like it. And then on the right side, you have a kilowatt hour readout so you can see how much power you're actively using. Again, if we go back to modern, it just shows you the uh, the, the kind of mid-range estimated range left and then how much you're accelerating or braking and how efficient you're being. So I, I quite like having enhanced up. Then you have some various settings you can change your units, speed warning, a few other adjustments. That's your gauge cluster, but let's go to this nice big screen. A few things right off the bat I really appreciate about it. One, it's built nicely into the dash. It looks like it belongs. A lot of people are bothered when screens are tacked on to the top, looking like a tablet taped on there. And that allows the vents up here to really hit the driver nicely in the face. I think this whole center area is really, really nicely laid out and designed. You've got physical climate controls. I really like that. Large enough screen for a lot of different information and it's very high resolution and the responsiveness is really good. Now I'm getting a little sweaty sitting in here in the car with no AC on, so my hands are getting a little sticky, but you can see how quickly it traces along my finger. I really appreciate that. For controls, you do have your volume knob right here. I like having a physical knob, a physical home button to get you right back to your home screen from wherever you are. And then this one's a little strange. You can actually use this rotary knob to scroll through the screen if you didn't want to use it as a touch screen. It's kind of a very basic version of having a knob in the center here like some other vehicles do. The only time it's been useful is about never. I've never really found it that useful to use. I mean, in theory, if you got used to it, you could drive and kind of change things while the car is moving and be a little bit easier. But overall, it's such a good touch screen. I don't see much point for it. You have your main information in the center and then a little bit of a persistent bottom row that will let you hot swap between navigation, phone, audio, home, and your energy screen. Let's start off in the top left with audio. Here we are on our USB screen, but we can switch that easily up to something like FM. You got your presets up along the top that change. Looks like uh, when you go to something like, let's see, let's go from, 
Yep, when you go to FM, it switches to your FM presets, but you can easily swap around and get to other bands. You've got AM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, USB uh, A and USB C, some streaming services including Spotify and others that you can download, and wireless and wired Apple, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So a ton of different inputs in there. If you do want to see a little bit more in-depth on the sound system, check the link in the description for our review on that. The phone screen, very straightforward. Actually, because I have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay connected, it swapped right to my Apple CarPlay screen to the phone there so I could use that functionality. If that were not connected, it'd give you a pretty basic phone layout and allow you to make calls, text messages, etc. Navigation, Chevy's built-in navigation is pretty good. I like the contrasts. Things are maybe a little bit basic looking, but it follows you well. Admittedly, I haven't done any naving with it, but let's try this real quick. What would you like? Navigate to the big house. One moment, please. I'm on it, searching for lake house nearby. Well, that wasn't great. More than one match, because it may take you a while to choose. Please do so manually from the display. <laughs> kind of a pleasant voice, though. But it is a nice nav screen to just have up and be seeing where you're going. Then you have your energy screen, and this is one I spend a good amount of time on. Starting in the top left, you see very straightforward how much power is left in your battery. I am kind of surprised it doesn't give you a percentage readout. You only have these little bars to see some what... Uh, how much battery sort of from a visual perspective you have. Below that you have a little bit more in-depth detail screen. You can see how much power you've used since your last full charge, how many kilowatts, and what miles per kilowatt hour efficiency you've had there. And I like this in EVs. It shows you what elements of the car are taking up certain percentages of that charge. So 79% of that has been driving, but 21% is my climate, and that's because I've been sitting here recording and so we haven't been getting any mileage out of it. It's just been sucking up range. Impacts, this is another way of looking at how your energy is being used, your driving technique, your terrain, your climate, and your outside temperature. All of those are going to positively or negatively affect your range. And then a history screen to show you how efficient you've been over the last 50 miles. Then in the top right, you have a charging screen. I also appreciate this because you can adjust the, uh, the power limit of the 120 plug. So you can either have it at 8 amps or 12 amps. And if you're someone who isn't super familiar with electric vehicles, you might not really know much about this, but this is useful for, say, if you pull up to an old house. Maybe you're getting a, a rental on the lake or you have a cabin or something, and it's got an older power system, and you don't really want to be pulling max amperage out of that, max power, and, and either tripping breakers or just putting a lot of heat and strain on a system. You might want to drop it down to 8 amps. And if you don't, if you're not really in need of as much power as possible, you just want to kind of have a trickle charge going. I like having that option in there. You can also adjust some options for your target charge level. So if you owned this vehicle, you'd probably drop this down to about 80 or 90 percent to extend your battery life. Displayed charge times. This is going to be if you'd spend more of your time charging with level two, 240, or level one, 120, and you want an accurate readout on how long it's going to take you. You can use that. Location-based charging. With the home location set, the vehicle will use the active charging options while you are at home. Level one cord limit can be saved for a predetermined amount of time. So that's nice because then you can set times for say, if you pull in at home, you can charge in off-peak hours, maybe saving you some money from your electricity company. But if you are charging say out uh, downtown or something or in, a, in a, a parking spot, you want it to charge immediately. That's That's pretty smart, that shows you that Chevy has been in the EV game for a while and has gotten feedback from both its engineers, its designers, and its users and customers on how, sort of what sort of functionality would be useful from an ownership perspective. That's, that's smart. As someone who's owned an EV before, I could see that being very useful. Down here, you have some energy, energy vehicle settings. So this will kind of show you, like, for example, you can have a theft alert for your charge cord. If somebody unplugs the cable while the vehicle's locked, then you can get a notification that it was possibly being taken, you get notifications if it stops charging, a little feedback on your charging, a lot of different options there. Back home, let's go down to users. Now this is nice because you can actually create customized vehicle settings for different users. So for example, if we bought one of these, Alyssa could have a profile and I could have a profile. 
That way when she got in with her key, it would customize her radio settings, her climate settings, screen settings, etc. And then when I got in, I would have my other settings. And if we had other Chevy vehicles, you could actually sync those settings up between them. So say if we own something like a Silverado and a Bolt, then it wouldn't matter which vehicle. It knows if Charlie's driving, he likes these sort of settings. That's something that a lot of people probably wouldn't necessarily know about until they were told, but makes it pretty useful. And a lot of, a lot of manufacturers are kind of coming out with that, but it's cool to see Chevy having it as well. You are able to turn the display all the way off, which I like to be able to do when I'm just cruising along at night. A lot of times it's nice to take away that brightness, especially from such a large screen like that. This is kind of interesting. You can adjust the volume level for the chimes in the car. So such as uh, door ajar or headlights left on, you can have those louder or quieter. It's something you don't see too often. This is a fun feature. A lot of people appreciate this with vehicles. Uh, passive door lock. It means if you walk away with the key in your pocket and you leave the vehicle unlocked, as you walk away, do you want it to lock? I know a lot of people like having a feature like that. And you can have it do a little horn cheep when that happens or just do it subtly. All the new Chevys have teen driver modes. You can actually set it up so the car can only go so fast. The radio can only be turned up so loud. The seatbelts have to be turned on, etc. I know a lot of people will appreciate that. As I said earlier, you can install a lot of other apps and Chevy is able to add applications that you can use and install. So like, for example, we could get Amazon Alexa or the Weather Channel or Fox Sports, a lot of different streaming services you can put in there. Again, they could add more. We have a Wi-Fi hotspot, 4G LTE in this vehicle, no 5G yet. OnStar services, if you needed help with your vehicle, if you're stranded, damaged, lost, things like that. You can do climate control from here, even though you have these physical layouts, you can do climate control on the screen. The only place I've found this particularly useful is it's the only way to adjust where the air is blowing on you. So if you're not using auto down here, if you want to change it to being uh, on your face or on your feet, you have to do that from this climate screen, which you can also bring up from this control right here, this button. Another thing that I actually do appreciate in this car is you have a toggle for heat. Again, for those of you who aren't familiar with electric vehicles, they have to make heat using electricity. So there are times, especially in our Tesla, where I wanted to drive the vehicle and have some air blowing on me, but not have it cooking out heat and wasting, wasting electricity. But there was no way to manually turn the heater on and off in that car. In this, you can both manually control the heat and the air conditioning. That's not something that I think most casual users will use. Someone like Alyssa probably wouldn't care. She's just a, if I want the car at 72, make it 72. I don't care what it takes. But for me, I like being able to geek out on that. You have a nice 360 degree camera that you can bring up and see the various sides around the vehicle, good resolution. You can even get it right on the curbs as you're pulling up or backing up or see the sides of your vehicle. It's a nice system. I think having a 360 degree camera at this price point in this type of vehicle is smart. Then within my Chevrolet, you have some customizable options as well. We are not logged into that, so I can't show you too much of those. Now, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, something else that works quite well. I, small complaint, I would like to have a CarPlay hot button right here on this, on this below screen. There's definitely room for it, so it's a shame that if I were, say, in the energy screen, I couldn't get to CarPlay with one click right there. It seems kind of strange. Huh, tapping it does give you a little... Notification readout though, that's interesting. But you've got to go home and then to CarPlay and look at that, large screen, great resolution, decent refresh rates, not as good as the actual home screen, but being wireless, not a big complaint. Let's start off with the phone screen. We saw that a little bit earlier, you got your dialer and everything. Here's YouTube music coming up, very nice, easy to use. If I wanted to start playing something, there's your now playing screen. Google Maps, again, coming up nicely, good resolution, straightforward and easy to use. And here is your settings screen. Really good size, very easy to use. I am happy with it. How about Android Auto? There's Android Auto, again, taking up the whole screen, looking nice giving us Google Maps. It would be a little nice to have the widescreen version. I know this isn't exactly a widescreen format, but I think the widescreen version of Android Auto provides more functionality. But you've got your Maps home screen. You can switch easily over to YouTube Music. You have that little bit of a darker layout. Looks a little different in this car, or in this uh, Android Auto than it does on iPhone. Home, there are your apps right there. Again, good refresh rate. Not as great as the 
the uh, integrated screen, but responsiveness is good. And there's settings. So there you have it, the infotainment and gauge system here in the 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV. Again, this is one of my favorite sort of everyday car systems. I really appreciate it. Outside of a luxury vehicle, this is really high up. And again, it's not something that people really attribute to Chevy and GM, but they make some really great technology. Thank you all so much for watching. As I said, if you do want to see more on the Bolt, check the links in the description. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Thank you.